I want to share some of the details that are part of this toy chest. Um, I'm going to get into the design of the details in another episode. What I want to do today is just share the construction of some of the details that are part of this chest. Uh, one of the details is an angled uh, indent, uh, which is on a bunch of the rails. There's one here. I don't know if you can make that out. Um, you can see it maybe a little bit there. I'll show some close-ups of these, obviously. This is on a bunch of the rails. Here's one that's got a top and bottom. A little bit of an angled uh, indent there. Uh, on the feet, another details on the feet, there is a little uh, foot indent right at the bottom of the feet. Uh, and I'll show uh, how I constructed that. There are pegs. Uh, here are the holes for the pegs. So uh, this chest is going to have about, I think about 20 or so uh, pegs on it, on the, on the sides and on the lid. Um, and also there's, uh, there's the legs and the frame and panels are in different uh, planes and I'll show uh, how that works. And also a lot of the pieces have a small chamfer uh, right along them that leads to the next element. So along this rail, um, there's a small chamfer at the top and bottom that leads to the panel, which is inset. Um, along this leg, there is a small chamfer along the side, which leads to the rail, um, you know, that's inset a little bit from that, uh, side, from that leg. Here's a look at the corner, which just shows a few more of these details. One is the chamfer uh, that leads to the various levels. So here you can see a little bit of a chamfer on the leg, which leads down to that rail, and a little bit of a chamfer on the rail that leads down to the panel. You can also make out the holes for the pegs. Here at the top, I have two holes, two different size pegs. And then you can make out this curved indent along the top rail, which goes all the way along from side to side and is slanted indent about a sixteenth of an inch there at the top and then comes all the way up uh, and is flat at the top so that curve uh, just fades away there in the corner. The peg holes were created with these square punches which is just like a mortise chisel punch. Uh, these are designed by uh, Daryl Pert and are available from Lee Valley and it's just a square punch uh, that you would set where exactly you want it and then you go ahead and drill out uh, with, the, with the drill bit the set out, drill out some of the waste, then go ahead and tap in the punch uh, with your hammer, uh, and then remove it, and you're left with a perfectly square hole. The pegs themselves were created by hand, uh, first uh, on the table saw to get them to the right uh, width, which is just a little bit uh, wider than the hole, so they kind of uh, push those fibers the hole out and get a really nice tight fit. Then I chamfered the top edges uh, just slightly. Uh, very slightly and um, sort of made a trapezoid, but I wanted to stay away from sharp lines. So after I had chamfered uh, the corners, um, I went ahead and kind of sanded them, round them over slightly, uh, and then chamfered the back edge, the bottom, so that uh, it'll start in the hole really nicely uh, and then just pound them in. Here's a close up of the leg detail. Uh, you can see it's defined at the foot and along the edge and it's actually slanted uh, from, you know, where it kind of tapers away and then it gets deep in the corner and then kind of tapers away on the other side as well. Uh, I just did these by hand. There were six total. And I first defined the edges uh, with a marking gauge. So I just came along with the marking gauge and defined the edges, both the bottom and the side. And then I just used a chisel uh, to go in there. And I first defined the ends and the side and the um, slant and then uh, chiseled away the waste here, you know, from here down into those corners. The chamfer on the edges was super easy to create here at the router table. I used a 30 degree chamfering bit. I actually wanted the 60 degree angle part, so I ran them on edge um, and just ran all the edges I needed. Creating the curved indent on the pieces was a little more challenging. Uh, it's done here at the table saw. Pretty easy setup once I got it figured out. Basically angled the blade uh, and it was a little bit different angle for different pieces because this indent would come in, you know, further on some pieces than others. Uh, but I would angle the blade and then set the piece against the fence, which I've removed so you can see into the operation here. But I'd run the piece against the fence with the blade uh, below the table. Then I would slowly raise the blade. It's on an angle, maybe five degrees or so, and there'd be no riving knife there. 
uh, raise it up into the piece to the height I wanted and then run the piece all the way along until I get to the other stop and then I could just pull it away. I've embedded magnets into this lower rail, uh, both sides of the lower rail from the back. Uh, what I did was basically uh, drilled holes all the way along here, embedded a small uh, half inch diameter uh, rare earth magnet and then put uh, screwed on a back uh, onto here uh, to keep those magnets inside. So let me show you a closer look at what's inside of here. Here is the back side of that rail. Uh, you can see I first use a Forstner bit to drill out a series of holes. These are half inch holes. And then I put a rare earth magnet into each one of those. And then I actually put in these little wooden plugs uh, to hold the magnet right there at the front. Uh, once those, there's about 14 of these per side. And then I just have a back piece that goes on top. Uh, three screws to hold it in place and now the magnets are held tight against uh, the front of the rail. So with those magnets installed uh, I can take some letters here, magnetic letters, and stick them right on there. And I think that'll be a lot of fun for Kira as she's growing up to be able to play around and stick things right to this side rail. In fact you don't even need magnets. Uh, here's a card scraper. Anything metal will just clip uh, right onto the side there. So those are the various details that are part of this toy chest and they really make the chest um, just that much more elegant. So as I said, those are the, how I uh, constructed those details and uh, in a future episode I'll go over how I came up with the design of those details.